body that doesn't have uh that doesn't at least have some dots she's like, like a fully tatted up girl you know right <laughs> it's just and these, color this video everywhere. does not i mean i don't know what it's going to look like in uh, post, in post edit, but it's she's got color everywhere <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Gecko Cove Connection. My name is Bobby, and today I have Nate from Nasty Racks on. Welcome, Nate. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah. No, this is a long time coming. I know we, we've been trying to get together for a little bit, and, you know, I, it, it's awesome. I've had a lot of uh, amazing guests on, and you're right up there with them. So thank you so much for, for saying yes. Thank you, Curtsy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Nate, you know, we were uh, actually uh, – we've – chatted a few times back and forth over the last few months sure. but we both were a part of a giveaway recently you went first i went second um and that was put on by southern girl exotics i uh, and i had a, a ton of fun on that did you uh, enjoy your time uh, with i did. the giveaway i did i got i'm glad the person who got her um or got the baby got the baby just because uh they were they seemed super excited they said they had to um, stalking my critters for for a bit and wanted to get the line and all she had to do was pay shipping now so that's I'm awesome for yeah I, I mean that's one thing i like uh, I, I saw that when i was first getting into the hobby was uh, i actually saw the same giveaway the year before and i came like literally i was the next space on two out of however many giveaways there were uh, one was yeah. from Red Rack and one was from uh, Aaron at Southern Girl Exotics. Uh, they both, it was one tick away on that little spin wheel. And so yeah. I'm like, man, this is so exciting. And, you know, I would have loved to have won one of the geckos back then. So once right. I started producing my babies, I was totally in on it. Um, did Aaron reach out to you? Did you talk to her first? How did, the, how did you guys connect? Um, we had just been chatting for, I don't know, probably a couple of years now. Um, she tried to get me in on the last one, but I... Uh, did my ADHD thing and uh, <laughs> flaked on that. So I finally just said, no, just hit me up the next time. So um, yeah, me and her were friends before. So Awesome. Yeah, she's amazing. Um, yeah, really like enjoyed talking with her, working with her. I was just uh, on a live last night. Did you see that at all? Were, were you there? I or? did. Yeah, yeah, I was there. Awesome. Yeah, no. So and I enjoyed I your live with her the, the time before that. Yeah. Uh, that was my first time ever going live, and I was a little bit shy. <laughs> oh, you, you did great. You're a natural, man. That's why I'm like, I got to have you on. Come on. <laughs> uh, so let's back up a minute and uh, let's introduce for people who don't know you and, and your, you know, geckos and your business. Um, let's just get to know you a little bit. So, you know, basic question on a podcast. When did you start getting into reptiles? Did you always grow up with them? What, what's your I kind did. of uh, story? My family, my family has always had something a little bit crazy um, at certain points in my life. I've had lemurs and other sorts of primates and I always thought my thought of myself as a mammal person and then uh I had a couple of snakes and like a bearded dragon when I was younger um so I, I gotta never... stop you did you say lemurs did I hear that right yeah I um I used to breed um ring tail lemurs and then I worked at a zoo for almost a decade wow um, took care of all kinds of cool animals lions tigers bears oh my <laughs> um, holy cow my favorite were the monkeys though and uh, other primates that's um, awesome I was never too much of a uh, a reptile guy. I had a couple of snakes and, you know, the, I don't want to say basic stuff, but some mm -hmm. of the, you know, something, the things that people always get whenever they are, you know. The bearded dragons, bearded the dragon. had, leopard uh, geckos. ball python, yeah. Yep. Um, and those, I always ended up getting rid of them to keep their food. <laughs> 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 nice. Um, but then... Uh, I had lemurs for several years. I had tamarins. Those are um, some of the smaller um, monkeys. A lot of people refer to them as like uh, finger monkeys. But yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a guy uh, just north of I... me who who breeds them, and I, I'm always interested to see exactly, you know, like, they're cool. They're, are they cool they're pets? Babies are they? Crack. Okay, all right, fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, babies are cracked that can climb walls. <laughs> is it a pet that, you know, you said you worked in a zoo, so you had some skills that obviously most people don't have. Is that, are they, you know, that or a lemur? I'm assuming you, you've got to have a sort of a specialty there, right? They're not great pets for I everybody. I would pets. Pets, no. are, pets are animals that, you know, I consider people 
um, who don't necessarily know them can come up to them or, you know, you can take them in public or things like that. These sure. are animals that are like super smart, super social. Um, and unless you're like a stay at home person or you have the money to buy two of them, um, I really wouldn't recommend it. They're not meant for most people. Um, yeah. Most people can't provide the um, adequate care for them either. So um, while they're cute and they, I think when people see them, they see a, uh, an animal that um, portrays a lot of the human traits. So mm -hmm. they fall even more in love with them. And then when you bring them home, they're, they're, kind of, they're a nightmare. <laughs> they're not anyway. a dog. <laughs> kind of, but they're so cute. <laughs> yeah. It's a border collie on steroids. They can jump <laughs> right. around. So right. oh, that's awesome. Very cool. So you, you were involved in, in having and breeding all those exotics. Um, work. Were you a zookeeper? Um, so I actually started as a gift shop, a part-time gift shop person. And nice. then uh, at the end of my duration there, I was actually the interim uh, executive director. Um, wow. Uh, yeah. So I worked there for a little over, uh, right at eight years. Um, started in a gift shop, worked my way to a zookeeper, and then I was over our education department. And then a couple of, uh, I don't know, probably four years after that, um, when our executive director left, me and the animal curator um, shared the role for a couple of years. Um, Very cool. We were a small nonprofit zoo, so not a lot of money to, you know, get somebody super uh, fancy in from, you know, a larger city or whatever. But... It's a, hey, that's okay. It's an opportunity for you, and that's pretty awesome. Do you want to tell everybody what zoo it is? Or I was the Texas Zoo in Victoria, Texas. Um, right before I left, like, stayed long enough for us to get back on our feet but uh we got hit by a hurricane and then a couple Ooh. of days later we got hit with a flood that pretty much decimated the place um oh, so it took us about six or seven months to get back on our feet and open back up to the public but um i haven't really stayed too well in touch with it um sure just i don't know i have different feelings about zoos now but okay um, fair enough so yeah. Um, so then you jumped yeah. into to reptiles here. So what what was other than your your basic reptiles? When's the first time you got a new cow species? Um, actually, it was a I won it on a raffle. So oh, no, did you really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, That's why we're giving away remember. geckos. Yeah, it was a it was a baby. Um, probably just like three or four grams. Um, uh, I don't even. I think it was a stripe. Uh, okay. And then, you know, I was addicted after that. What they're year were we talking? Super easy here? to take care of, and I think they're super rewarding. They're cool little creatures. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, obviously, we love them. Uh, you wouldn't have the banner behind you if you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, so okay. How long have you been working with uh, new cow species? Um, so at the zoo, I guess technically is my first start. Um, we had whenever I was over the education program, we mm -hmm. had a crusty gecko. Um, cool. His name was, I think, Spike. Uh, real original for his yep. little eyelashes and <laughs> his crest but um so we had he was a rescue and we um, used him during our programs um and then in 2020 um i had a pair of jackson chameleons that um had babies so then i did nice. some trades for babies uh, a couple of baby gargs and then um kind of through trades and little purchases and swaps and bunch of different situations but um now i have <laughs> a room with 100 and 120 <laughs> something <to get> going, so. <laughs> it, they're addictive you know i was just yeah. talking to someone who was inquiring to buy one of my babies and uh they're like yeah i'm thinking about just getting you know one to start see if i like it which is a great idea it really is sure but I warned them. I'm like, these things are like potato chips because if you if you buy it and you never look at Instagram or Facebook or TikTok or wherever you you see your gecko right. content, totally fine. You know, you you can just put it right. there, enjoy it. Um, but if you see what people are posting, you just start drooling. You're that like, first okay, I gotta bit. get another one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a gateway. So, did you ever trade a lemur for any geckos? No. No. <laughs> I, I, those two be periods of my trade. life didn't overlap. <laughs> Fair enough. That's what I figured, but had to ask. Um, oh, that's great. So, okay, you were mentioning you have over 100 geckos. How many uh, breeders are you running right now? Good question. Um, one, two. 
I think I have uh, nine pairs of crested geckos going, and then nice. um, ten pairs of uh, gargoyles going. Oh, awesome! Okay, so that's right around the size that I'm looking to be with the gargoyles, yeah. about eight to ten pairs, ideally. Um, have you kept it that size for? few years now is that where it seems manageable um i had believe it or not i had more but i've kind of pared down um over the last year ish i've kind of got serious about uh crusty geckos too sure. so um i pared down on the animals that i kind of began with um okay. as far as gargoyles go and then uh tried to grab some um grab some crusties very really cool. love the cappuccino lines so they kind of got me inspired to get a few more of those very nice are you looking to, to make fraps out of them or, or is there a different project i don't know i kind of to... i kind of well yeah but at the same time i really like high white um just standard caps oh interesting very cool yeah i mean my favorites. one day i'm gonna have to stop saying that uh, you know i don't have crested geckos uh and, and just buy one you know uh, I, right. I gave my only crested gecko away to my cousin and actually What's interesting is I think I was just watching uh, the Gecko Pods uh, talk about the uh, cappuccino genetics, and yeah. based on what they were saying, I am pretty sure this is like an eight or nine year old cappuccino male. Mm -hmm. So oh, I'm cool. really interested to see. Again, my my cousin has it, and it's just a pet, and she loves it. And I mentioned that to her. She's like, I don't know if I want to breed him, you know, she because she loves his tail. It's okay to be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly i'm like well we could make some really cute babies you know so but she was all excited that he might be rare you know I, i'm not an expert yeah. there but it was kind of cool to see her her get excited so i have one cat male and one cat female that are have, uh are proven now uh um, oh nice and of breeding age so i paired my male with uh, a red lily or phantom lily oh, um nice. female i've got him with I don't know how to explain her. She's like a, I think she looks kind of like a hypo color, what you would call, and um, a lot of other animals, like a light pinky, almost translucent looking base. Um, oh, cool. Nothing like, um, not like the pinky line has, or but, whatever they're called. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing like that, but um, they made some cool looking babies. And then I paired him to uh, another high coverage um, Lily female that I'm excited to see their babies. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, no, and I, I had him paired to a yellow too. I had some yellow caps patched just not that long ago. Okay. You know, it's interesting. You're, you're when you say like high white yellow caps. I'm still so new to this stuff. I I, I can't even imagine in my head. I'm gonna have to go look it up. Well, afterwards. let me show you. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Um, so this was not super high white, but the white that, of course, it's fired down right now, so it's not gonna show its true potential. But um, sure. Let's see. Gives us an idea. Oh, beautiful! It, oh, oh! Now that it's got a jumper, right? <laughs> but they never want to hand model perfectly. For you know? sure. When this guy fires up, he's like really dark. Beautiful. A lot of tigering. That's really cool. And the yellows—they're a little bit harder to identify as caps. Um, mm -hmm. It's just—it's easier whenever you have a clip patch, just because the markers are um, are a little more obvious because you can compare the typical um yellow baby to uh, the cat baby to the cat it always helps to have friends who um know more about it too that you can <laughs> shoot pictures too absolutely yeah and actually that's that's a great you know thing about this hobby is you know whether it's i could list off five <laughs> or six people that that i message way too often and probably annoying <laughs> right um and so i'm assuming you've probably got the same kind of thing where you know when you're first starting especially you got to find those people the the people that won't just ignore you yeah the two people <laughs> that i bugged the most uh early on were um chris Payne Schwab uh with uh badlands for pediculture and yeah. Carl Vargas, those are two of my good That's friends. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's he's, a good uh, one He's actually to know. just located like an hour and a half uh, down the road from me. So, oh, um, that's awesome. We did some trades yeah. and some other fun stuff. I I've said this a bunch of times to anybody who brings up Carl. I, he is one of the friendliest, happy-go-lucky guys when I see him at Tinley. Um, and just, you he's know. A good guy. 
Oh, so, so like it, it, he'll sit there and spend time with you just, just shooting the shit, you know? For sure. And then he'll sit back down in his chair and go, look at how awesome my geckos are. <laughs> and they are. They're amazing. So, and I Pretty love that straight, little peekaboo um, box. At the last uh, show, where was that? Not Rosenberg. Maybe it was Corpus, but mm -hmm. uh, one of his leeches got out. And, oh, no. Uh, yeah, it was, it was like... I think it was, I don't know if it was one of his breeders, but it was a pricey one that had mm -hmm. gotten out overnight and it busted the the cage. Oh jeez! And they got uh, like several booths down. <laughs> uh, people were like, they just I think they just sold plants and I think maybe some spiders. But they okay. were like, is anybody missing this creature? <laughs> and they just held it up on a bag. <laughs> and I was like, hey, like please don't bite me. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's awesome, man. Um, well, speaking of shows, are you? I uh, are you going to be there's a, is it the Dallas show or there's a show yeah, in Texas the, the NARBC so like Tinley um, mm -hmm. it's just the Dallas version or I guess the, yeah. the sister of very that. cool so I just got I know it's not as big but it's a pretty big show isn't it yeah a lot of the a lot of the same names come to this one too that's awesome so are you vending that show or just just visiting I'm vending uh, this is my first oh, awesome. my first vending yeah um, this is my first year of vending I've done three shows so far. And I'm on the waiting list for several others. Um, I kind of, it's a little mini vacation. I live in a small town called Victoria. It's down in South Texas. And okay. there's not much of a, not much of a fun scene here. So any opportunity I get to go to a bigger city and, uh, you know, as long as it pays for my booth fee and my, uh, at my, uh, hotel, hotel I'm and all that stuff. Happy with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you're like, okay, I got to sell X amount of geckos to make this right. net neutral. And then everything else is bonus. <laughs> Um, right. yeah, that's where I'm lucky at I me. Mean, I, I, I can't imagine me vending any big shows anytime soon, but then again, I might, you know, next year, not this year, but next year I might have nine females going of just gargoyles that might produce enough where eventually I could, I could do for a sure. show. Um, um people are always I, looking for, um, you know, I don't want to say economical, but you know, lesser priced to get go. So even if your stuff's not like insane, you still take it, put it on the table and um, you yeah. get a lot of people in the hobby that way. Definitely. I'm hoping it's all insane. Let's put it that yeah. way. I, Amen. I've been, I have been selling, you know, some of the adults I started with yeah. um, in order to buy new younger stock, which is going to set me back a few years, but I really want to eventually have everything that I have is so insane in my collection that I'm just happy. Yeah. And I sit there for 10 years without thinking of buying anything like that's my goal. Um, and so like you, you were saying you wanted to refine your, your collection. I've just been thinking that, you know, running, running different scenarios in my head the entire time and right. hope to God it all pans out. But we know that just because a uh, pairing is ridiculous doesn't mean they produce all ridiculous babies. So we're not going to talk negative though. We're going to manifest. It's all. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's going to be 10 out of 10, you know, just Amen. absolutely nothing. But, <laughs> You know, ultra blotches and, and six stripes with giant laterals. Uh, that, that's what it's going to be. And a mix of both. Yes, there you go. <laughs> but, so, okay, going back to the vending, if this is your first year, um, what expectations did you go in with, and, and what would you say is the same and different than your expectations? Mm, my expectations, so my very first show, big show that I went to was an ARBC, uh, so... Nice there were like tons of big breeders there and people with the expectation of actually buying. What I've noticed yeah. with some of these smaller shows is that the people who are going are either uh, like first time buyers or people just going to look at, it's like basically treating it as a zoo. So yeah, um, I'm happy. Like I said, with, if I can sell enough just to make, you know, cover the trip the there and cover yeah. the table, I'm totally satisfied with that. But, um, there's a lot of really cool people um, in the animal world. That that was something I, I knew going in, but uh, going in and meeting the other vendors and just the people who get excited about these little uh, cute little uh, scaly creatures. Um, yep. that's, that's Do you find a, if some of your local smaller shows, do you find a lot of competition? Or are you one of the only you know people with especially um, gargoyles? There's a lot of crusty people for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Gargoyles probably not as much. Um, Carl, Chris, um, there's a couple of other people, 
Um, but I don't I want know to know what Carl well puts on it for his prices at some of the smaller shows. I wonder if like um, <laughs> that ten thousand dollar mail all of a sudden think, is, no, you know, he like doesn't take two. anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think uh, the couple of shows that I've seen him at. I don't think I've seen anything over like two thousand dollars. Okay, makes sense though. You know, yeah. you yeah. play to the market. It's, like you said, it's mostly new people. people with deep pockets come. I don't think. Yeah, no, that's fair. And so uh, would you say that mostly you meet your goal of covering the cost? Have you ever had a show where it's just an absolute flop? Uh, no, I've, uh, so far I've done three shows and I've sold at least one or two animals at, uh, at each show. Nice. So Very cool. Not, not a total loss. So this is my first year sort of selling anything that I've produced. Um, and, you know, obviously, you know, people complain about the economy right now. Um, I'm noticing my stuff that's, under 400 and under sells pretty quickly. Um, yeah. Anything higher takes months. You know, I don't know if yeah. you're experiencing the same thing. Um, to be honest, but... I've been a lazy POS about posting stuff from more market <laughs> and pushing it. Like whenever I first got started and I was really starting to produce um, mm -hmm. some nicer stuff, like I used to post in all the Facebook groups and on Instagram and really like, I would go into Facebook and type in uh, looking for Gargoyle Gecko or, you know, really like make connections. But sure. I, feel, I get a little overwhelmed with, I think I have uh, 81 babies oh, um, wow. between Gargs and, and Cresties um, yeah. in my rack right now. So <laughs> the idea of taking pictures and posting of 80 them babies online, that are jumping it's just over. like, <laughs> yeah, eventually I'm just going to have to hear Christmas present, Christmas present, birthday present. <laughs> You can ship one to me anytime. You've got some gorgeous <laughs> stuff, man. Okay. Um, I'll keep that in especially, mind. Especially, you actually had uh, a baby that really impressed me a, a few months ago. Um, it was one that, that had phantomized, like, I mean, this thing was probably oh, like yeah. 10 grams. Um, uh, yeah, I know. It was insane. Uh, it, it, it was I think, nuts. Yeah, it was, it was probably like 10 to 14. I can't remember. But I, yeah. I sold it. Um, yeah, I remember asking uh, you because I was like, hey, can I can – I, you know, ask you the price. You're like that one's gone, but I think you said it, there was a sibling that had one eye that was was phantom, and the other uh, wasn't, um, which was pretty sweet. Maybe I I'm making remember. that up. No, there there was a sibling that um, was I thought possibly going phantom, but I had never yeah. heard of um, them going dark eyed that quickly. I usually people no. say that, um, and I didn't even know the parents um, had that in their blood. Um, I, and I, I don't know the genetics on that and how that how that works, but um, yeah, that I think I recently got a picture of it. I don't know. Um, I feel like the there is, when I first because one of the first males I bought actually I bought it at Tenley from Nature Nut. Um, according to her, I love her. She, she, I don't see her very much. She she hasn't yeah. been to Tenley since I bought this gecko, but she had an amazing uh, hybrid at the time. Oh like, yeah, this thing was bright red that you know normally yeah. they're orange i think i know this the one you're talking was, about oh it was gorgeous you know and uh yeah back then it was kind of controversial so some people were giving her shit some people were telling her how amazing it was right um and so i just thought it was gorgeous but she sold me one of my first males and uh he produced a ton of babies i did end up uh, selling him just because it wasn't the right right fit for me yeah. but i uh, she was telling me that you know the parents carried the gene um, and that she thought it was recessive, so that it was just a basic, simple recessive. Um, right. I don't know if that's accurate or not. You know, if anybody knows, put it in the comments right now. But <laughs> I, he started to turn right as I was about to sell him, and I sold him about uh, two, just two and a half, three years old. Um, yeah. You know, so he only got one season in with me, but his eyes were getting darker and darker every shed. Right. So awesome. yeah, that was three years versus <laughs> I'll take, I'll take your speed version versus my <laughs> super slow right? version any day. To be honest, I didn't even, I didn't even realize it until I was photographing it, um, to post it online. Yeah. Uh, somebody actually messaged me and was like, Hey, is that a phantom? And I looked mm -hmm. at it and I was like, well, sure as shit. <laughs> <It's a phantom." laughs> then I was like staring at the other babies that were related to it. I was like. <laughs> there you go yeah hey, hey, any other ones yeah yeah i gotta stop drinking while taking photos you know <laughs> <laughs> no it's because i'm a lazy pos like i said and i do a hundred at a time not really a hundred but i do a but ton of them like at it. a time so it's like snap snap right down snap snap right down and uh you know put it back in the box and then 
put them away. So I know. Yeah. It, it's also what's funny is when I'm taking a bunch of photos, right? Um, I'll put it all on my computer and I put it onto my Google share drive that my wife has yeah. access to. And she just has to sit there. She's like, damn it, Bobby. She has to sit there and delete every single gecko photo because she doesn't <laughs> want to just have, like, thousands of them. She's like, I right. want to see our kids every once in a while. <laughs> These are our so, children. <laughs> right. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> not her babies. Um, All right. But it, it's just – I think it's always funny that, like – because I'll get, like – five of each shot because there's always something out of focus or something wrong with each one. And it's like, I need six of them just to get one good one. Yeah. Right? Especially take, with them trying to jump around. I usually try probably like six or seven photos too. I usually try to get one side, the other side and a face yeah. on or like kind of like downward shot. So you can see it's dorsal. Yeah, the dorsal shot um, of right. full body. Different ones. I usually try to get like an up close of the face too. Cause a lot of people are pulled in by that. Especially if they have, you know, I, uh, you know, I don't know who coined all these terms, but lipstick and eyeshadow and you know the eyebrows and all that stuff. A lot um, of the, one thing I don't see a lot of people talk about is like their eye ring. A lot of them have, yeah. uh, like a color a circle around their eye. You're right. You know, I, I feel like when I first started getting gargoyles around you know 2019, 2020, that was one thing I heard Tiki uh, geckos talk about quite a bit. Yeah, that he liked that. Um, but yeah, you don't hear very much about that anymore. Um, yeah. same thing even with eye color. Cause like, like you, you said, you know, you didn't notice the, uh, phantom eye. I, right. I had a gecko that I posted and they're like, Oh, gorgeous blue eyes. And I'm like, does it? Yeah, no, I guess not. it does have blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so That's one thing I like about the cappuccinos, um, they have, a lot of them have red eyes or Ooh. like, you know, like, I don't know what it actually is, but like the veining look that you see in a lot of the new cow geckos, mm -hmm. um, that's Theirs right. are a lot, or at least my babies, they're all like super red. So with the cappuccinos, um, I feel like some people say like there's obviously different quality cappuccinos. Are there certain lines that you gravitate towards or certain people's cappuccinos? I think mine, mine were just accidents that people found that they had cappuccinos. Um, nice. and then I proved them out. Um, well, the, my mail came to me as from a proven line or I think it was proven right after I, um, after I got him. But I nice. my <laughs> They're like, damn it. Um, right. I tried not to talk about it just because I proved about right at whenever all the shit was going down about the nostrils and things. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I only proved it out with one baby and it uh, it pipped, but it didn't. Um, didn't survive. It, yeah, it didn't survive. So Yeah, it was interesting listening to that episode of uh, the Gecko Pod again where they were saying that like their muscles kind of deteriorate. Yeah. Um, and, and they look at melt away. They don't look like super strong to me. No, not at all. Yeah, it, it's interesting too. All the other genetics that are out there, like uh, you know that that one, the uh, whatever it's called, Pinky Super Blizzard, yeah. whatever the names are, um, you know, they seem really cool. Strong. They seem strong. You know, I'm just I, I hope that they stay strong, right? Yeah, and I think they will. Um, maybe they're not as strong as you know some other like you know F ones or stuff like that. Right. But I think that's what happens when, when you're mixing all these super recessive traits. Even when I had a uh, bearded dragon, there was one bearded dragon I got that I loved, but it was basically a stunted kind of grower and yeah. had this condition where its neck would bulge out every time it ate. And I, I talked to other people who kept them or bred them. They're like, Was that like yeah, muscle just... or was it like fluid? No, it was just their, their, their well, I guess muscle. Their, their muscles were underdeveloped and mm -hmm. just didn't keep the shape and they would have like a pouch of food right here um but it's just little weird things with it where you take that versus you know uh, even the normal geckos you get at a box store that just have no right. morphs i mean i've seen those and they're massive and they you could feel the muscles and they're strong compared to this guy but he was gorgeous he was bright red and had the dunner trade and had he was hypo he was translucent he had everything at the time yeah so it was just everything crammed into one gecko and i'm like right. yeah they they they're all cool but put together they, they made sort of a mess um, right like that uh i forget what's this uh i forget who has it i think it's tony gross who has frazzle do you know frazzle yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Gecko? he looks like he has a little bit of everything a little calico or whatever <laughs> that's a cool gecko i wish that would have proved out as something um that and uh what's the one the pinch has patient zero so yeah. it's all cool stuff i think that i've seen a lot of uh 
gargoyle geckos pop out recently that people are starting to come out of the woodwork with gecko I nerd i think my favorite right now is gecko nerd with uh his uh gecko barbie yes i don't know if it's barbie yes, line was just, the barbie yeah that i think he calls it barbie but the line's something different maybe it's barbie line i think yeah. that sounds cool but yes i was just talking to him and he thinks it's a, a straight recessive i want to get so him on the pretty. podcast so oh, it's gorgeous because um, you look at the pastels and I think they're they're definitely underrated, but they're not as bright and flashy as everything else. Like yeah. I love the reds. I love the oranges and trying to sell me like a, you know, a pale pink one. It's like, nah. I don't know. I, I love them. Um, oh, like I, I have his are like bright. Have you seen the difference with them fired up and fired down? Yeah. Yeah. He sent That's me a crazy. photo. I'll put it actually right here. Um, of the fired up and fired down because that was, it's. it's I got a really light colored um, stripe. Well, it's gonna prove me wrong right now, but mm -hmm. this one's a little bit crazy, but I really like this one. Oh, that is cool. It looks so vibrant on camera, but oh, it's mm -hmm. grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you know it's Here, always Martina. easier if you notice, like, to wake them up. It's the exact opposite of me. You know, if it's late at night, or, I'm, or for me, it's in the middle of the day, right? I'm nice and right. happy. With gargoyles and a lot of the new cow species, if they're, like, supposed to be up because it's nighttime, they're kind of more, actually, they're more active. They're sometimes a little more right. grumpy. Where you take them straight out of sleep, and they just, what's happening? Okay, I'll just chill here. Go back <laughs> to sleep, you know? Where if you wake me up in the middle of the night, I'll be pissed and, and grumpy. Um, right. So... But, yeah, definitely easier to, to handle them during the middle of the day, for sure. <laughs> but, so, yeah, so it, it, those what's coming out is just absolutely amazing. The the Barbie line, uh, I've shown on the last two podcasts that um, it's overseas. It's this orange gecko that sort of is like tiger striping down the side. It's oh, all yeah. like. I forget who it know. is. Um, it's like it has a dark base, but then it has like the, the thick ass stripes, like almost skeletons mm -hmm. down the side. Yeah. yeah, it's like a skeleton that just kept going with, with its I development. I have a screenshot of it on my phone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's my background. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, <laughs> screw my geckos. You know, I, <laughs> this is the wish list. There was also um, one where it looks like it's got a black line down the center, and the rest is just a solid yellow. And uh, I think that was a European reader, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, again, I'll post is the it a baby right still? here. Still a baby, so it might develop into something else or something pop out. But most of the time, um, whenever I have babies born with like what I think is going to be like really beautiful yellow, it always turns like orange, like a super vibrant orange. Yeah, I mean that's uh, the cool thing with this is even if it doesn't stay yellow and turns orange, just that it has no reticulation, no other striping on it. Oh, it's cool. just a solid gecko with a black line down the center. Oh um, yeah, that's cool. I think that's pretty sweet. You know. And especially um, one thing I'm noticing could be a trait, but again, this is just a theory that I've heard is, um, and actually I have a gecko that, that demonstrates this, um, you know, when they have like a blotch pattern or even a stripe pattern, but it's just completely that black center line is mm -hmm. their base color and it's completely open. Like it almost looks like they perfectly just took an eraser and went straight down the middle of the back. So some people have called it empty back, kind of similar to the Cresties, which I think we need a different name. But it's funny I, I didn't realize it because that. I'm not really like I said I haven't always been a reptile guy, um, mm -hmm. so I've never been into like breeding other stuff. But how the names just plop from one group of animals <laughs> to the next. It's relatable. It's already you know popular with one versus the other. Right. So I mean, and there are things that make sense like melanistic and things like that, but. Right, like the blizzard, Get creative, or... or at least put it after your yourself so that you become famous, you know, Trevor <laughs> right. Albino or something like that. Um, You're talking about like um, this is actually one of my first babies. Let's see. I don't know if it's You're talking about like that. -ish? Yeah, so ish that, but wider and just like there's nothing there. If oh, that yeah. makes sense. So, like, so, oh, so it's not like outlined with like a, a, a thin black line or anything? No, no, That's cool. it's just kind of a ghost straight middle of the back. Um, if I can find a picture of a, an example, I'll post that here. I'm making okay. a lot of work for myself in, in uh, editing, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm going to mention um, everything that uh, takes more work for you, right? 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I've gone through a few episodes where I don't say that at all. And it's like, <laughs> man, I'm done in like 20 minutes editing this video. You know, done on one take. And then, you know, this one I'll be, be on here for like an hour and a half searching for this one moment. Um, little insider thing. Uh, the, the system I use to record with you. Um, mm -hmm. I can actually search words and it'll tell me at what time stamp oh, cool. I say them, which is pretty sweet. And so that's why I always say the same thing. I'll post it right here so that yeah. I can search that and go, Oh, <laughs> that's where I need to put in stuff. That's cool. So yeah. Anyway. Um, but yeah, so I think it's really cool. And then even, uh, the, the hypo stuff that, that, uh, people are trying to prove out. I know Tiki's got white boy and mm -hmm. vanilla ice, um, we, rack house, uh, eclipse rack house has one. I, I, I want to say um, Kelly with Eclipse. Yep, might she's have got one too. Yeah, who would have figured that uh, Paul and Kelly would, you know, have some right? stuff? Right. <laughs> so... Like their boyfriend, girlfriend, or something. <laughs> <laughs> who who knows? You know, I God, I'd hate I'd hate if they break up. Uh... <laughs> who gets the kids? Right. I think they keep a, a separate yeah, selection. I think, two, two I think they just pieces. yeah. Um, but I'm obsessed with her. Not to get too sidetracked, I'm obsessed with her dogs. Uh, she breeds uh, Frenchies, um, and, and they, she's got some really cute ones. But uh, yeah, I sure. don't need another dog. I've got three already. Uh... I have eight. <laughs> You have eight? I have eight. Okay, now you got to tell me a little bit about that. Uh, how did you end up with eight dogs? I intentionally got two of them. Okay. Um, I, I mostly have chihuahuas or some small mix of chihuahua. And then I have okay. a couple. Make um, it easier. So one I got as a wedding present. Wow. Um, the zoo is actually responsible for several of them. People come and think because you take care of uh, you know exotic animals that you want you know stray dogs so they come yeah. dump them over the fence or <laughs> dump them in the park that the zoo's in. so um have one just two, tell them you feed them to the tigers and then they'll stop doing that right yeah. <laughs> actually the, something funny and kind of related to that at the mm -hmm. at the show whenever it's yeah. closing down i <laughs> um i told people that were walking by that didn't seem like they were really interested i was like Guys, these all go to the pound after, and it's a it's not a no kill shelter. <laughs> oh. Every thirty minutes, one dies. <laughs> oh they man! They made people laugh and stop and talk and um, made friends that way. So that yeah, funny. no, that, that's awesome. They're probably happy once you realize you're not doing that. So <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> this monster. <laughs> right. Can't be friends with him. <laughs> oh man. I really do need to make a dog podcast because they're, they're my first passion. And uh, yeah. Your yeah, dog I, I could do a whole segment. Yeah, I was a dog trainer during grad school. And, and you wouldn't know now with my puppy because I have no time to train her. But uh, <laughs> my oldest dog, he, he's a champ. Uh, <laughs> he'll impress anybody. Go fetch you a beer still. Um, <laughs> but I know how to do it. None of my dogs do any of those things. <laughs> well, it's a lot harder house. with a small dog. Yeah. You know, when they're the size of your beer, it's a problem. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but that's all. So you just, uh, did you get most of your dogs, like you said, just people dropping them off or rescuing? Dropping them off or somebody knows that I'm an animal person. So they're always calling to tell me that, hey, I have this kitten. Hey, I have this dog. Hey, I have this mm -hmm. squirrel. Hey, I have this raccoon. And I always um, you know, <laughs> find the appropriate person for them. But these, post yeah. them on Facebook or, you know other places and say hey we found this dog somebody come and claim your dog and it doesn't happen and then it stays here too long and gets a name or a nickname and then it's part of the family once so. you name it you're screwed man so yeah i feel like people are the same way with geckos like they won't name it until they know they're going to keep it and breed it right you know it's yep. like no this one's 32-46 <laughs> you know <laughs> whatever your your skew is and then uh, it's like, all right, well, I guess I'm going to keep it. What's the next name I can come up right. with? Um, so I'm terrible yeah. about keeping names for my geckos. I always feel like imposter syndrome or something about um, creating like you know goofy names. There are a couple that I have, but most of my stuff is real basic. Uh, like <laughs> my Phantom Lily, I just call it like PL uh, PLF yeah. on my eggs. <laughs> <laughs> nice i mean you gotta get creative especially when you have so many and everything right. um i mean I, I wish that you know i don't with like my grandma breeds golden retrievers and so like she'll even name the puppies just like just to distinguish them because they all look the same right you know 
and I, you know, she'll have the Disney litter and then she'll have this litter or that litter. Right. Like if I did that with babies here, like I'd run out of things like that. You know, I'm not, not dealing with eight animals. Even so what I've done as far 15. as like babies go, I normally do the initials of the mom, initials of the, or initials of the mom, X, initials yep. of the dad, and then the birthday. And I just do dash between all of it. So that way, yep. um, and I put that in the name of my morph market too, that way. Um, and then if it's exactly. a clutch, then I do A and B at the end. So it makes things oh, easy. Oh, cool. Yeah, I do something similar. I do the uh, uh, males initials first, females initials. I just use the you know first two letters, right. and then um, usually it's a dash. I uh, the number of that pair, right? Mm -hmm. So I go one through however many they have that season, and then the year at the end. So yeah. we'll see. Everybody's got their own little like way to track right. it, and uh, whatever works for you is great, uh, as long as you don't mix it up when you're sending me, you know, a really gorgeous gecko. Uh, right. <laughs> happy, <laughs> happy to go there. Um, so, speaking of your pairs, what are you the most excited for this upcoming season? Because um, I know which one I'm excited for, but uh, are we thinking the, the same, same thing? <laughs> oh, Cheeto, Cheeto, Cheeto. One. Yeah, Cheeto. So, so speaking I of was, the name. I, contemplating between two males I have, I think both of them are actually um, different looks of Stripe. I think a lot of the sure. time, well, we don't um, we don't look at it enough because I think a lot of the time a lot of what we call blotches are actually just like aberrant um, stripes, kind of like broken mm. stripes that are sure. wider. And the reason I say that is because I've noticed in a lot of the, they share a lot of the same characteristics, like my male that I'm talking about. You got him. Uh, there's a really big part of me that thinks like this guy is, a lot of people would refer to him as a blotch, but I think he's a broken stripe that has really thick stripes. Oh, absolutely. Or somewhere in between. Yeah. No, that's but, definitely a, a stripe to me. I love him though. He's Gorgeous. Shit. He's like really scaly feeling, but um, <laughs> I bred him this uh, this year for the first time. I got the first yeah. clutch. Um, well, actually, it's the second clutch. The first clutch, one egg went bad, and then the other. They were both first time breeders this year. Um, yeah, that happens. Yeah, I had the first egg went bad, and then the second egg. Um, the baby, for some reason, went full term, but I don't know if the egg didn't like expand enough with it. But um, it was so colorful. It was so cool. Uh, <laughs> Don't you hate blotched, that? Yes. Um, but it had like a little bent neck. So. Oh, no. Uh, the yeah, second patch, I got well. a stripe, and then I got a blotch out of it. So we'll see how those cool. color up. That's awesome. And did you pair him to a stripe or a blotch? I paired him to a blotch. blotch. I think it's okay. a true blotch, too, because her color goes all the way across her dorsal. It doesn't have like that, um, you know, that missing patch. That skeleton sort of look. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, and it's it's interesting too because like some of my best geckos, um, like one of my blotch males is from two blotches, and the other one that uh, I I got recently, you look at his parents and it's a gorgeous you know six stripe mixed with a blotch, and you know some of the strategy is to you know mix the two lines to to bring it around the belly, right? You know even if it's you know if you want to widen out some of those stripes, widen out the dorsal. Um, you know, mixing in blotch so, can, can help with that as well. Funny enough heard. about that. Um, so the male that I paired Cheeto with, if I pair him to um, an obvious um, blotch female, mm -hmm. even if she's meh, um, as far as coloration goes, he produces yeah. solid six stripes. If I really? pair him to, I paired him to two stripes now, and both of them have produced like insane uh blotches i'm so confused by it um i, I pulled some babies in preparation we to show nothing. you what i was talking about but, but yeah let's see so this baby is a six stripe that was produced with a very like i don't want to say mediocre but like a lot of people wouldn't find it desirable um sure she was one of my first geckos um but ooh, cool. ooh look at that yeah, that's gorgeous it's so vibrant in person I love the but, orange. Yeah, it's really I nice. I know it'll probably turn, but still. I don't know. Um, that center that center line mm -hmm. is like already super red, and it's been that way for quite some time. And that yeah. on the outside is 
it stayed pretty orange. I think it might just turn into that like super fluorescent red. Which I love. I absolutely I love too. that. That's my favorite. So that's kind yeah. of what Cheeto why Cheeto excited me so much other than her um other than her high coverage. Yeah. Um, that and the the bicolors. Uh yeah. both of my blotch girls are bicolors and just I love it. I don't know what it is. It's just the contrast. It adds another element to it. You know, it's not just one solid color, which, uh, yeah. trust me, I like those two. <laughs> right. But what I really like, I like about a lot of those bicolors is that the red is usually, like, skirted with that orange, and it makes yeah. it almost look um, like, it's, like it's glowing. Yeah. No, absolutely. Hey, baby, real quick, do you have, but... after this baby, do you have Cheeto to show everybody, or should I, I throw do. up a picture? Awesome. I do. I could pull her out. But this was a. Yeah, uh, this is not showing up on camera very well. I think it's because my ring light is right behind me and it's. Um, yeah, it's okay. It out, yeah. But this it usually be... comes out better quality when I download it. Here, back up just a little bit. Ooh, there mm -hmm. you go. There's a the focus. Very nice six stripe. And this is a. Uh, um, this was born right at the beginning of November, so uh, not that that old, but it's coloring yeah. out really, really well. That's awesome. And that's another yeah, the one thing, blotch to that same male. At what what age do you see most of your geckos kind of have a, a you know, glow up? Because there's some that come like straight whenever out Whenever I know that they're crazy. going to turn out to be nice, probably yeah. 7 to 10 um, yeah, grams. Um, probably somewhere around there. I can usually – I don't know. I'm kind of getting to the point to where – um, I always take a picture right after they're born and I try to compare yep. them and kind of like see, um, so <laughs> I have, um, really good pattern recognition, recognition. Yep. So I see patterns pretty well. Um, I've picked up on like what yellows are going to turn to orange, what yellows are going to turn to red or what oranges are going to turn to red, what oranges are going to stay orange. So I can most of the time tell when they're babies that, they're going to go through an ugly stage or like a, a dull looking stage, but then they're really going to mm -hmm. pop. Um, and then some of them have really surprised me, um, but I, yeah, I've gotten pretty good about it, seeing babies. Yeah. If you, if you are good at recognizing patterns like that, that's why I always preach, you know, if you don't have a hundred geckos to, to cross examine, right. you know, go onto other people's websites that have that sort of information. You know, Gargoyle yeah. Queen has a bunch of that page and I, uh, there's a really good Cosmic Facebook group. Has that. Is, is, is it the progression they, group? Yeah, the progression group. I don't know. I think most of the geckos that are posted there are typically um, Cresties, but yeah. a couple of uh, a couple of guard people will post them there occasionally. Yeah, it, anything like that to give you more <laughs> eyes on those transformations. Yeah. And, and you can start <laughs> to see what that's like. Like even just I had uh, – G Reptiles, we just uh, launched that episode last week. Yeah. And he was in, in that episode, I show his progression for one of his girls that's just out of this world. You know, it's one of the tiki geckos, uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson crosses. And yeah. the gecko as a baby just looks meh. You know, like your right. gecko you just showed looks just as good, if not better. Um, but she just had, you know, she, you see the progression and, you know, part of it's, well, it's a lot of its lineage, but yeah. also just. <laughs> this this gecko turned out fantastic. Da, da, so, da, 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 da. Hey, there she is. <laughs> okay, so what's the story behind her? Well, you got so, her out. But... Um, a guy named Josh posted her probably close to a year now, maybe a little bit longer. Um, yeah. She was obviously younger and smaller, but um, he had posted her, and I was like, I fell in love because I love blotches, and I love animals with a lot of orange on them. Yeah. She has a really cool pattern. And then after I talked to him, I, you know, I messaged him right away, and I was like, hey, I know you don't have a lot of geckos. Um, if you ever decide to sell her, let me know. Yep. So we kept in touch, and then we didn't talk for a long time. Um, and then I was like, hey, hey <laughs> I haven't seen your post in a while. Still here. I'm still, still interested. Here. Just so you know, I'll be up in your area soon. I don't know if you want a seller. So yep. then uh, I said, name your price, because I don't have a shit ton of money, but I had recently sold several babies, so... I was like, name your sure. price, and then he gave me a price, and I got her for a really good deal. Um, nice. But, yeah, she's... $200 for her. I can't believe you I got that, that good of a price. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
This is not doing her justice. Dude. She has color everywhere. Everywhere. It, it, she's, she's, especially on her face. I mean, on I've seen, obviously, there's, you know, uh, Tiki's Tampax and, uh, yeah. you know, uh, her, her the belly. one that, jeez, look at that. That's gorgeous. And even uh, the the baby Jake at Red Rack produced. But you don't see that kind of coverage. I think blotches are a step behind everything else. Right. Um, I mean, there's honestly, so focused there's on not the stripes. a place on her body that doesn't have, uh, that doesn't at least have some dots. She's but like a fully tatted up girl, you know? Right. <laughs> it's just and these, color this video everywhere. Does not, I mean, I don't know what it's going to look like in, uh, in post, post edit, but, but it's, she's got color everywhere. Pictures and videos never do these geckos justice. Right. Um, like, I, I hate, honestly, I hate when I, I look at the videos of, like, my girl Eve. Yeah. I'm like, come over to my house. It, it, it's just, <laughs> it's a completely different experience. Like, right. when you see her in person or you see Mahe in person or some of the super bright animals, it's just like. So, this so, is the six stripe male that produced both of those babies. Um, nice. He's, he's, he was a you lot more vibrant like when I first got him. Huh? Oh yeah, you do like um, orange, and he he glows. Uh, if you see him in person, like that, um, it was a lot. It was a lot more vibrant the last couple or a couple of years ago. But um, sure, it's he's he has really fantastic lineage. I, uh, he's a product of uh, what's her name, Frilled Queen. Oh yeah, yeah, Renee. Yes, yeah, I got Renee one King. from her too. So I'm hoping that I don't. I I think she's a true. I don't. I don't know if she's a true blotch or not so but do you know what the lineage is on that gecko no. I, I, think, you, I believe he you know where he got him from shut up <laughs> I swear. Seriously? i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure he said he bought her at Petco. <laughs> but oh uh, yeah, i'm what super she excited shows... oh man if, if she like throws a random gene too kind of like <laughs> in cappuccino right. um yeah it, it's interesting you brought that up because i posted a video Oh, like almost a year ago now, um, finding a red base, not that nice, but a nice female at my local Petco. And uh, it was on closeout because nobody wanted it. It was almost an adult. And uh, I was like, All this I stuff is it? so Should subjective. People, you know, we place value on it, but this gecko is just as important, just as intelligent, just as whatever as the ones yeah. that, you know, are brown, you know, Julie Absolutely. <laughs> right. You know, but it was funny because I'm like, you know, it was a great price. And I'm like, maybe I should do it. Maybe I shouldn't. Um, right. But I posted it. And I remember how many people were like, that's gorgeous. I, can't, I wish that was at my local Petco. Right. And then other people were like, oh, don't you dare. That's a god awful. You know, it's like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I didn't end up buying it. But I I look, if I can find a gecko like that at a Petco and spend only $300 on it, which is what they go for there. Oh, I thought you were, Ten you were seconds. trying to say ten hundred. I mean, three hundred again for me. Her, I was like, nope, still not there. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not off either. <laughs> I'll trade you Eve for her. No, oh, I... <laughs> okay, we'll see. We'll see. They all yeah. think about it. <laughs> think about it. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> we'll work out a deal with some of their babies later on. How about that? Sounds good. That sounds awesome. But, but I'm yeah, hoping for uh, um, just really high coverage animals, whether it's blotch or stripes. I prefer stripes and for some reason he throws um he throws blotches um so whenever i paired him to a uh striped female several times yeah. now he's produced really nice uh really nice blotches i'll show you one yeah you were saying that yeah let's see the blotch babies so this is an older one this is not as nice as the other one i'll show you but i really like it, it has, almost has like a lacy look to it um, oh, cool. So this was to my female called Wanda. Oop, nice. Why? <laughs> Don't work with children or animals. Remember <laughs> they said that? <laughs> but. Oh, very cool. Nice. Fire, when it fires up. Yeah, when she fires up, it it's pretty cool. That's but what's then, so cool about this hobby, too, is that you, you pair up what you think is going to produce X, and then the egg hatches, you're like, Psych. where the hell did you come from? <laughs> So, Milkman's baby, exactly. So, so then, same mom as same, yeah, same mom and dad as that last one, but. Mm -hmm. um, Ooh, yeah, that's gorgeous. Again, this video is not doing it justice. No, but it's still 
it's pretty. You can really tell. Really high coverage. And yeah. it's, it's getting more and more color as it gets older. Well, that's the thing with blotches, too. You know, kind of like with uh, Dalmatian with Crested Geckos. Yeah. I feel like blotches spread a lot more For sure. than stripes, you know. Um, and even with that, the, the stripes that do spread, um, I would say if you look at them even as babies, there's ones that clearly have the defined lines, and those don't spread hardly at all. Yeah. The ones that look like it's like that fuzzy TV look, you know what I'm talking about? Yep. Where the lines are just zigzagged a little bit all over the place. I, I see like the, with the cappuccino or the frappuccino gene and the white color on them. That's like one of the ways that I can tell whether a, a baby is cap or not. Is like the edges of the white tend to look yep. like blurred versus like a really defined crisp line. Um, yep. That's kind of how Chio is too. Her all of her lines are fuzzy around the edges. Yeah. It. it, it, it... It's awesome. And one thing that's interesting about that is I've heard theories on when they are super crisp, you know, and obviously with the stripes, you want them as wide as possible. Right. Um, that they'll retain their colors better with age. Oh, really? Because that's, yeah, it's a theory. It's I don't know lines. if it's true or not. Um, but that's, you know, what they have. But the ones that develop wider as they're growing between, you know, 10 and 50 grams um, that sort of spread – they, if you look at them as older geckos, it recedes back to their original hmm. kind of uh, coloration. And so they lose that, you know, it's almost like temporary color um, right. before they breed. Again, could be completely wrong with that, but it's just a theory I've heard. And yeah. uh, I think it's kind of interesting. I hope it's not true because the male I have, the striped male I have, he, he has that fuzzy look as a baby. I got him at, you know, two and a half grams, and it's just spread ever since. You know, yeah. keeps... I'm hoping that, that that his dorsal and his, his laterals start to touch eventually. Um, <laughs> that would be awesome. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. No hoping. So, We're manifesting. We only there speak you go. It positive. will happen. <laughs> when it spreads. <laughs> yes. So... Um, very cool. So that's one of the projects we're both super excited about for you. Um, any other projects that, that you're just, you know, wondering what's going to happen or really excited about? So a couple of my babies that, um, I really like, I've repaired that, that male that's with Cheeto. I'm really probably my most anticipated is for sure Cheeto, Cheeto and that guy, because, uh, yeah. his lineage is. All of it, I'd really like all of his babies, whether it's blotched or, um, or striped pairing. Yeah. So um, I'm really excited about that. As much color as she has compared to the other females that I paired him with and the results that they gave me, I'm, I'm anticipating that. Your expectations this is be... are that much higher. I now. know. It's going to make me so sad if it comes out a little brown gecko. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Petco. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> knock, knock, knock. You want your gecko back? <laughs> Right. You'd be like, all right, Kovac, I'll sell it to you now. <laughs> um, another That's one awesome, that I'm excited man. about. Um, so I guess I'm an official breeder now because one of my grand geckos is uh, ah, <laughs> having babies nice. for the first time. So um, I paired him uh, to a nice red female. I'll show you, show you that. Before. Very cool. No, no. While you're getting that one out, do you keep – you, know, you said you do you do one to one pairs for the most part, or are you rotating so, your nails? Um, how do you how do you I have a rack system, that? and it's like a U line rack. It's not like a slide in and out kind of rack. And sure. uh, on a row, I typically will. I usually pair my male to three or less females uh, a season. Sure. And I keep my male on the end, and then I just rotate him out to the girls like every ten or so days, as long as he's not dropping weight. Yeah, which so, can happen. Uh, yeah, Very easily. for sure. Um, like I was telling you about that gecko that I lost the first uh, clutch to, um, mm -hmm. the female dropped weight a lot. This was her first year breeding, so I pulled her. She still I actually got another clutch from her, so um, she still isn't up to weight. So I'm going to wait until next year to try again. Do you wait until they're two, three? I've even heard some people advocate for four years old recently. I stop. Well, I start. Um, I usually try for at least two years, and then yep. um, if they're really big and they're consistently, if they're not gaining any more weight, uh, and they're over like the 55, 60, 60 plus range, and I notice that they're not getting any bigger and they're um, mm -hmm. 
they might be shy of two years. I'll go ahead and try as long as uh, as long as, they as, long as they're they seem healthy. Um, usually, yeah. it's only on animals who are super chunky. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I've got two girls like that right now. One is two years old. I uh, just turned two years old, so I. I Paired her, um, Bimini. I don't have a, a blotch male that's big enough to breed with her, so I bred yeah. her with one of my stripes. And then my other girl, who's a half sister, Exuma, they both are at 60 grams by a year old. Okay. Yeah. So I've been sitting here for almost a year, <laughs> like going, oh, God, you're bigger than some of my, you know, breeding girls who are at 50 grams, right. you know, and now they're 65 grams each just absolute chunkers and uh i'm like by the time i get a male up to size to actually be able to breed with you it'll be like five years (laughs) (laughs) seriously um but yeah so i bred one of them the other one's a few months younger so i'm gonna wait till till next season right um just to see but yeah let's see yeah let's see this baby so this is the male i was talking about actually i just showed it okay um that was my one of my first babies. Oh, nice! That's so cool. I can't wait till I produce something and then I breed it later on. You know? Right. It's a, that's gonna it, be it. It, You know, people always think I'm crazy, um, but this is his girl. Of course, she's in about best to shed people too. are crazy. Let's be honest. Right. But oh, I'm excited. Cool. She's she's provided a really nice cool catch. baby before. Uh, <laughs> right, <laughs> ninja. <laughs> exactly. It's one of the skills that you you don't have to be bitten by you a spider. You just have to, for sure. But I'm excited yeah, about yeah, that yeah. one because she's produced really cool babies before, um, with a with a blotched male before. So yeah, it's super vibrant, and I'm hoping that um, since they're both stripes this year, it'll make something cool. Be even better. Yeah. Which which uh, pair made the the phantom eye right away? Um, I call them my G5. They're both, um, let me see if I grab them real quick. Sorry if my fat roll showed. No, you're good. So, this is the female. These are both really big geckos, or chunky geckos too. But, it's this female. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. I really like about her is she stays pretty pale, um, and then Mm -hmm. her orange is pretty vibrant in person. And then, this is my male. I really like her a lot. But this is the pair. So cool. Neither of them are fandom. Neither. No. So, so they might just both be carriers if it is a recessive trait. But, but I really like I really like all their babies. Um, there's a baby that's or I guess it's an adult now that's being mm-hmm. sold. I went back, but I broke. <laughs> <laughs> so what? It, at what age do you start considering selling your geckos? Are you willing to sell geckos young um, as long as for the they're right healthy, price? Like, it's probably not. Uh, it's probably not about size. I just make sure that they're eating regularly, they're shedding right, and I usually wait at least two months. Okay, no, that makes unless sense. unless it's like an yeah, experienced person, um, you know, that's had a ton of geckos. I, I'll sell before then, but um, you know, you can't even tell. I feel like you know the true potential for at least a month. Yeah. You know, um, it, it, what, what would someone call them the other day? I showed a baby fresh out of the egg and they're like, yeah, you can't tell when they're little salamanders. And I'm like, yeah, that's a great <laughs> way of putting it. <laughs> so just slimy and wet and straight out of the egg. So, yeah, and even after the first shed, you can start to see it a little bit better. You know, sometimes I know. I'm like, oh, I, think, I think it's a full stripe. I think when... They, when they come right out of the egg, they still have their first shed. They're still slimy. I think that's a lot of a lot of time. That's a good indicator because um, they're always like super dark, regardless. Mm-hmm. But if you really pay attention, um, you can see a lot of their their pattern. I feel like even better mm-hmm. than after their first shed. Um, but that could just be me being crazy. Yeah, especially if they're fired uh, or fired. Well, yeah, no, fired down. Um, yeah. I feel like it's hard to see sometimes when they're babies and they're fired down. Right. Um, but yeah, it, whatever it takes to, to hold on to them. But you were mentioning, like, in the time you've started to sell, how many regrets do you have selling young geckos? Do you Actually, that, that few, baby that just... I that is now a breeder and I've had, I have eggs uh, about to hatch from, um, yeah. he was the one that I sold. And oh, yeah? I was like, I don't want that. She became my friend quickly. 
Um, yeah. We had to wait for winter uh, to be over in order to ship, but I was getting ready to ship it, and I was like, mm, I don't want to. I really don't want to. Um, yeah. It just had a, had a funky pattern, and he was like, he was super yellow when he was a baby, so I didn't at that time know um, what that could potentially progress into. But sure. um, I wanted to keep him. So I messaged her. I was like, hey, I'll give you one of my breeder females. And she was like, uh, yeah. Back. <laughs> yeah, let's. <laughs> right. yeah. And she was like, yeah, I'll take it. Because she was, um, she was wanting to kind of get into him. Um, not anything big, but um, yeah, she just wanted to try to give her a To not have breeding. to wait, fast forward things. Right. Because sure. she had a male that That's awesome. was, uh, she was hoping it was a female. That's so cool. You yeah. know, I think that's one thing, too, I want to mention is making friends with people you sell geckos to. It happens all the time. Now, I'm not besties with everybody who's bought from me. Right. But, you know, there are certain people who just you click with. And, you know, they're messaging you, you're ch chatting geckos with them. And especially if they, they get it and they're passionate about it and you can really right. tell they care. Um, I sold one this year. I uh, shout out to David, you know who you are, category five uh, geckos. He's just new getting into it and he's, he's killing it as far as, you know, just his mindset. Right. Um, and, and we chat pretty much daily at this point. Uh, so it's kind of cool. That's one thing I don't think people talk about in the hobby is, you know, it's always like, well, how do I find mentors? How do I find friends? Buy a gecko from somebody you like, you know, <laughs> and, and see if they'll chat with you. So I was trying to see if I could find a picture or a video of the one I was talking about. Sure. You can always uh, send me uh, photos later too, if you want me to okay, post cool. it. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a blotch from my G5 group that actually is related to that phantom um, that I kind of regret selling. <laughs> you can't keep him. But all, he's he's, I think he, I think he's actually going to eclipse. Um, oh, cool! If I'm not mistaken, hope I didn't divulge too much information there, but yeah, um, it's okay. But yeah, I'll well, send you a picture if, if so. Yeah, send me a picture and I'll post it right here. Where? Um, right here <laughs> <laughs> now you know my secrets uh, <laughs> thank you vanna white everybody uh, <laughs> so you know I, I, that would be a kind of a, i haven't even thought of this until now but like that would be cool you know you get some of the big names like if northern gecko contacted me and wanted to buy one of my babies i'd feel right. really good about it rack house page you know any any of the the ones who i'm just like I will take your collection any day. Right. And if they want something from me, if David from Tiki goes, hey, Bobby, I want to buy that gecko, it would make my, my year. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'd be like, I made it. I'm a real boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that's awesome. Um, very cool. So you've got your, your gargs going. You've got some amazing projects going. Um, is there anything with the way you're breeding or keeping them – that you have goals for moving forward. Um, are you still um, so in, in tubs it, or? I do keep in all my stuff in tubs. Um, okay. All of my, all of my geckos, with the exception of my Eurydactylodes, which are the uh, chameleon geckos. Yeah. I just got uh, a Austin Talus. I think I'm saying that wrong. I don't know how to say any of them. Well, the I know Agricoli and I know Viardi. Um, yep. I can say those, but outside of that. See, um, I butchered and called then, Velardi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably wrong. I'm from the Midwest. It, all right. I know it starts with a V and I know it ends with an I and it has double L's in there somewhere. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and then I have uh, my Strophorus in there, uh, which are the spiny tail geckos that are in um, oh, Exoterras. They're super cool. They're How do you like keeping cool. those? Um, I like them a lot. So I keep uh, the Ciliaris and then I have a baby Intermedius. Okay. Uh, intermediates are the ones that are kind of like gray and they have like spec the black speckling all over it. Sometimes they'll have like mm -hmm. lines on them. And the ciliaris are the ones who have super defined spikes on the tail. Probably the ones that mm -hmm. you are most recognizable. The um, ones that kind of have like different orange faces. Yeah, on orange, it. right? Yep. Kind of like that Rorschach yeah. pattern all over them. They're so cool and they're so so different. Every one is such a unique pattern. For sure. Um, I think it's Tremper that has some really really cool super colorful um who would have thought that man has quality animals i know <laughs> he usually has trash <laughs> hey, just just garbage you know i wouldn't take it <laughs> but um 
but um, I'm not. Sorry, so Philip, she you're keeps awesome. Produce, right? <laughs> um, I keep. Uh, she keeps producing eggs every three or four weeks. But to be perfectly mm-hmm. honest, um, I kind of just like keeping them. Um, yeah. Quite a few clutches have been fertile, and it makes me sad that the eggs go. Um, the eggs go bad because I don't. I haven't really like done my research on how to um, incubate them, but um, they can't be too hu- they can't be too humid and or they'll mold. Okay. Um, and that keeps happening to me. It made me sad because one time uh, I cut open a molded egg and there was a, um, a really pretty one. Fetus, yeah. Aww. But so now I just I just feed them out. I know a lot of people are gonna okay. cuss me out over it, but. I feed it That's to better than eat. throwing them in the garbage. I mean, you yeah. can do what I did and make a video about how you can scramble them and put them in a frying pan. <laughs> yeah, I didn't eat the gecko, guys. Watch the entire video. Don't come at me. All right. I did actually. Yeah, I, uh, I hope to. I, I, I have to hurt them eventually. Yeah. They, well, figure out how to how to hatch them and, yeah. and get it going because uh, I would love to get that species eventually. It's it's cool. one of my bucket yeah. list species. Um, the other one that that's in that same family, I forget what which uh, version it is, but it's got that yellow stripe down the tail. Uh, you know I don't know about. how to pronounce it, but it's the Strophus T, the golden tail. Yeah, it's I had a, I had a pair of them, and I was going to breed them. I think uh, I forget what its name is. I think it's like Gecklando. Um, mm-hmm. I sold them to him um, a couple of months ago, just because yeah. I got a baby Intermedius, and the babies they're significantly smaller than the ciliaris and mm-hmm. the babies are like even smaller and they're um they don't they don't eat pangea so i had oh, the idea okay. of yeah. keeping uh live bugs that a baby this big could eat uh, just overwhelmed me with the ciliaris yeah. at least their babies are big enough to where you know you can feed like a quarter inch cricket too and be fine so um well, that's my thing with the Eurodactyloides. Uh, yeah. I had Agricoli when I first started breeding anything. I actually got a breeding pair. I think that's one of the, for one of the reasons bucks. that you and I started talking. Uh, yes, it was. Yeah. And then I tried to overprice the the pair when I was trying to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I bought these for four hundred bucks, and they're at least worth six hundred, seven. I'm like, no, they're Agricoli. I so. <laughs> but I uh, yeah, so I, I sold off. Actually, I traded that pair away for one of my breeding females and two babies um i thought it was a pretty decent deal uh, but i kind of regretted it because i loved having the the pair the pair were just great pets and their babies were amazing they, they were great producers but i hated fruit flies yeah like i cannot stand and, and i tried to raise I had two clutches pretty close together and I had one clutch i tried with fruit flies and one without and the growth rate difference was astronomical yeah um do you feed yours fruit flies or do you guys I don't. Feed them I only like feed the my head? veggia. The, um, so all my geckos are kind of picky as far as flavors go. Most of the time okay. I'm feeding, um, I do it as a ratio Spoiled. of uh, two thirds the growth and breeder and then one third the fig and insect. Um, okay. And that's the one that everybody seems to like Makes the most. Makes it happy. Yeah. Um, I have the watermelon um, flavor that I mix in sometimes, but it doesn't seem to be. Um, liked very well. well. See, mine, mine go nuts for watermelon. Yeah, yeah. Maybe and, it's you know. because maybe it's so diluted that mm-hmm. it's a little funky or something. But who knows? They seem to like the big um, insect. When when your doctor oh. Doolittle and uh, yeah, you you've got that feature on. <laughs> you, you have an iPhone, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I uh, I learned how to turn that on and off the other day. I was playing around with settings, and I I I. There was just different things you can do to automatically do it. So thumbs up, rock on, maybe <laughs> do a light show. So yeah, it surprised me the first time it happened. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so it, those grow real. You know, it, to me, feeding Pangea is great for the, yeah. those guys, but you definitely have to be patient with the babies then because they're, they're going to take a little bit longer to, for to sure. develop. When they first hatched out, um, in the fir- my first time, I was like, oh, "What do I do with this?" Right. Even like the well, the tubs that I use for my gargs and crusties, um, they could slip out the top. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I keep them. Uh, yeah. I kept my babies in uh, critter keepers. Critter keepers. Yep. No, that'll you could do that. Um, I actually was talking to a uh, uh, Dan at a uh, Birds and Beast pet shop by me, mm-hmm. um, where I got even a few other great geckos. But I he was he actually gave me some of the. Um, what are the, the giant cups that you keep 
I, I the oh, flies like a, in like deli cup. Yeah, like one of those giant deli cups, yeah. and you know it's got the aeration on top anyway. It was a mesh top. Oh yeah. And so with the babies, I could keep two of them in that, right? And just put some little sticks and branches, and put the food down on the bottom with tongs, right? And it worked beautifully, you know. That's awesome. Um, because they're so tiny. They're, right. They're, they're so cute. They're, and because I, I kept, I think I had six babies in the same um, exo oh, yeah, era not, at one point. They're not aggressive toward each other at all. No. No, I absolutely love it. And at that age, you know they're not going to breed, so there's no right. issues there. Um, but yeah, no, I saw no aggression. It was, so I've actually, so I just picked up uh, in an awesome trade uh, this female, and uh, so I'm, I'm looking to buy a boy eventually. But you know, it'll take at least two years for them to, to grow to full size. But even this baby, I got it in because my first experience was having two breeding adults of Agricola, yep. which is one of the larger species. This is the smallest species. And this girl comes in, and I'm like, it's like half the size of my, you know, finger. <laughs> like, this thing's so tiny. Did you? How many um, months old did yours ever breed, your agricole? Oh, yeah. No, that's yeah. what I'm saying. They, they bred, I probably got about 10 clutches in the first year uh, I, that I had For them. some reason, I've had them, I think, for three years now. I only had one season yeah. that they produced uh, viable eggs. I don't know why. Wow. Okay. I haven't kept them any yeah. different. But Maybe it's just one of them is, you know. Got something wrong with them, yeah. it, you know, infertile or whatever it is. But it happens, you yeah. know. But, I'm okay. Uh, I just I keep them because I like their personalities. They're like little tiny Chihua. Um They I, are. I love them. Yeah. They're probably and one of my favorite species. They're going to bite you, right? <laughs> and would you even so. notice if they did? <laughs> no, not at all. No. Do you keep Chewies? I have a single uh, male Chihua. Cool. He's just really for a pet, kind of for fun. Mm, yeah, I, uh, I was going to get him a female, but then <laughs> a I, look. yeah, um, I got him in a trade a couple of, I don't know, maybe a year and a half or two ago. Um, I had sure. a pair of Chihua and they bred for me. Um, but I was, that was early in my gecko experience. So they were a little harder to breed and get, um, good eggs out of working. And so, and I was really passionate about the Garg. So, um, I sold them to get, uh, so I sold them to get, there was a guy in Houston, which is a couple of hours away from me, who was getting rid of his yeah. entire collection. He was moving out of state and he, it was like an insane deal. I got like 12 exoterras fully stacked with cork and lights and stuff. And like 12 adult breeding gargoyle geckos that were all like pretty wow. decent for like $2,000. So yeah, I was like, deal. I sold those. Uh, chewy, like lightning fast <laughs> to, to try to just you know, to make fund up it. the money, right? Um, yeah. So I did that, and that really kickstarted my my whole um, everything I have now. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. People, you know, it, it, people kind of scoff at the the wood and you know all the stuff that goes into it. But even if you go and you know get fake plants at Hobby Lobby at forty fifty percent off, right? You know, there's still it, it adds up when you've got. 10, 20, 40 enclosures to, to deck out with the way you yeah. want to, you know, and corks X amount per, I don't per, keep too many fake plants in my, uh, in my enclosures. It's mostly cork work. Um, and the reason I say that is because unless it's like, I don't know if I have any around me, unless it's like a solid plastic leaves, I find the mm -hmm. ones that are like fabric, the geckos don't oh, really yeah, have an mold. opportunity to like, yeah, they mold and then the geckos don't have an opportunity to look the, the, water off of it so i don't put that in there yeah they're just like sponges well, my, for bacteria my favorite plants that I, I use in as many enclosures as i can and again i wait for hobby lobby to get their 50 percent off sale on fake plants are these ferns i should grab one real quick actually let me do that yep they're fully plastic i know exactly what you're talking about they don't about. mold and i can throw them in a tub with some soap and wash them and they've yeah. got all these little crevices and i'll see the geckos hide in them right um absolutely love these you know the little bendy part down here so you can you know kind of prop it up on right. everything else but it's my favorite one you know even unlike crested geckos and some of the other geckos the leaves you know they're great if you have them i, I still use it just because i i own them but uh they don't really hide in those leaves very much they right. don't climb on them like crested geckos um they're pretty much cork bark kind of animals right when I did keep so. um, when I did keep the plants in there, most of the time, I put like um, 
a foam tube and then I would overlay the um, the plant over it. Yep. So they didn't really use the plant as much as they just used it to like hide behind. Right. Gotta love it. Well, that's one thing that's kind of cool about your uh, Australian species. The, the is it strophers? Am I saying that correctly? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're out. You know, that's the cool thing with the Eurydactyloides too, is they don't hide very much. They you love know, they're vines. always out. Love them. You yeah. know, uh, it's always funny too when when they are grouchy. You know, and and they're just on the little vine. At least with the Eurydactyloides that I have, but, they would just kind of like shuffle around to the other side, <laughs> like a chameleon. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm like, uh, I can still see you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's usually just like this. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully they don't puff up at you. Have you ever been sprayed by either species? No. With their tail? Such a cool thing that they spray that stinky goo. Yeah. Um, I've heard that the um, that you can't mix a certain chemical with the strophorus discharge because it, like, mm. uh, it, cr- it can create a gas. It, like burn your skin. I don't remember what yep. it was. I, I, if I were you and own them, I would know what that is. Uh, right. <laughs> just, I want to say it was Windex, called, if I'm not mistaken, but who I don't I don't use Windex on any of my my critters. I, so. You know what? It, unless you're from my big fat Greek wedding where you use Windex on everything, <laughs> do you remember that? As <laughs> every medicine. Yes. So, yeah, uh, I'm glad you got that reference. <laughs> like I'm getting old, man. I. But, uh, yeah, usually I, I would, you know, hopefully it's not Dawn dish soap like that. That's the thing I'd probably jump right. to first. <laughs> right. The light's on fire. <laughs> your spouse comes in and you're dead. Oh, man. <laughs> yep. No, that would not be good, uh, obviously. So, very cool. Something else oh, I've man. fallen in love with recently, um, speaking of Australian species, are my yeah. tails. I love them. They have such yeah, those are little more popular. So, what do they like to own? Um... They're really cute to watch. They don't, they don't like, you know how the gargs and crusties will tolerate you, but the, yeah. they'll tell you about it. Um, yeah. I'll grab, I'll grab one. Of them. Okay. So I recently traded some, uh, some crusties for a pair of albino, Ooh. um, Pilbara. the same place Aaron got her albino? No. Um, they're probably, they're probably related though. Don't jump. That's so cool. Those but are they're so cool. They're so pretty. Those. They look like Disney characters, if you ask me. Um, yeah. They're huge eyes. <laughs> Could you but, imagine if you had someone draw it with like the Disney animation? They're right? similar, but then be I awesome. You to... But they they do like a little barking sound that's really cute. Whenever oh, that's uh, awesome. Whenever they're pissed. When they're done, they're like, "Put yeah. me down." <laughs> <laughs> So, but like, okay, so if they're in an enclosure, right, what, what size enclosure do they need? Um, I keep mine in tubs or in a rack system okay. with a heat tape in the back. Okay. Um, what size tub do you uh, use? It's 20 something. Maybe 26. Okay. Is that right? I, I'm It's bigger than a sweater. Yeah. It's the one that's like up from a sweater box. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, about the size. Uh, maybe 24. So, so probably like a 20 long uh, tank yeah, it's, would it's, probably it's, be. Uh, it's deeper than it is wide. Yeah, so, no, very cool. Seems um, like a shoot. So, do you like get to watch their interactions, or what makes? No, so I fun? don't. Um, I haven't paired any of them yet, just because when I got them, I just thought they were cool. Um, the, my first ones that I got yeah. were through a trade. Um, it was actually last year in February. I got my first. Um, I got the visual exanthic crested gecko, and then the market yeah. crashed right after, and I was super <laughs> upset. Um, oh, sorry about that. And I. I just wasn't passionate about it anymore. Um, so uh, I found a girl who was looking for one, and she became a friend. And then we started talking, and she traded me. She traded me a couple of geckos for um, the exotic. Um, yeah. But she traded me three knobtail, um, the Nephris Levis Levis. Um, okay. But I so I got a, two girls and a boy. I haven't even tried pairing them yet. Um, yeah. Just because they're not like a passion project, they're just really cute to look at. Um, I would sure. do eventually want to start breeding them, though. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, they're they're, they're gaining in popularity. Um, they're definitely cute for sure. For sure. I, uh, but you know, let me let me know when you start producing them. Uh, for I'll sure. Probably, uh, 
I'd love to learn about them. You know, even if I'm not keeping a species, sometimes when I'm bored, rather than just be a you know person who go, scrolls through right. TikTok, like that's my you know wasting time is you know <laughs> researching all these things that right. I want to have, or you know, if I had all the money, space, and time, uh, I'd have them all. You know, it's like Pokemon for people. Same here. Uh, <laughs> So, actually, did you see, I, I don't know if these are real or not, but I saw them on Instagram, where they look like Pokemon cards, but it's actual species of animals. Oh, really? And they're, like, trying to make a, a, a competitive, like, playing card game, but it's, they're not being creative at all as far as what, what it is. It's, like, literally, like, these are dart frogs. These are That's cool. lions. These are, yeah, it's kind of fun just to even teach you about certain species, uh, some of the, the one of those strengths big, they have. One of the big breeders should do that with, like, their super well-known animals. That would be really cool. Yeah. So, yeah. When you buy a an animal, do gargoyle from that line. trading cards. Right. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> Collector's item, one, one of a kind. Yeah, so, like, it'd be like the, their lineage cards. That actually is a really cool idea. I like that. You know? Cut it. Um, Cut it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. <laughs> no, that's great. Um, yeah, it's kind of like with uh, Tiki's doing the um, gold, whatever it's called, the Gold Standard Club or something yeah, like that. Basically, that. the, the AKC it. for geckos. Right. Uh, I know he started with crested geckos, and then gonna eventually he said do gargoyles. Um, but, yeah, I think it would be so cool to actually track lineage like that because I think so many people love lineage. Yeah. Um, and so, you know. I don't know how feasible it is for people who have giant collections right. to pay like a fee to, to register their stuff. Um, but it'd be pretty sweet. Right. Yeah. I, so with your collection right now, I, if you see someone was getting into it and wanting to invest in exoterras or tubs or anything else like that, what route would you say to go from the start? Like, have you figured out what's your favorite um, or do you just, Personally, I like the idea of an Exoterra better just with the amount of animals that I have. It would be insanely expensive. And so I swapped over to tubs two years ago, I think. Okay. Uh, because uh, Texas had a terrible um, freeze. And yeah. uh, I was really desperate to move the animals quickly. And I couldn't do it because I had heavy ass glass tanks exoterras yeah so i moved everything to um to tubs so what the things i would consider is your climate if you're really hot um and super dry probably i would go with tubs the reason i say that is because it's a lot easier to drill less holes in it to be able to Mm -hmm. keep humidity and things like that whereas the exoterras you have to buy those modification kits for the the top um yep um, so just things like that, consider your climate, consider, um, where you are, your elevation and things like that. Um, and then also like how serious are you about, are you going to be like me and end up with, um, you know, a whole room full of critters or are you going to have, um, <laughs> you know, are you going to stick with a pair or two and be able to have really nice, beautiful bioactive enclosures and have that be feasible? Yeah. I, I don't know many people. Who just, I mean, maybe one or two, right? But once once you know someone has like three, it's like, oh, you're, you're just yeah. going down that rabbit hole. Yeah. Uh, you, you caught the bug, <laughs> which a lot of us do, because they are easy to keep. Right. You know, that that's one of the best selling points is that, you know, there's not much extra work for two geckos versus 10 geckos. Right. Now you get up to 50, 100, you're breeding, a whole yeah. other story. But um, it creeps up on you fast, you know? It does. Tell me about it. I just keep looking over yeah. at that rack. I'm like... I'm vending NARBC next weekend, and I'm like, we're going to do some deals. <laughs> I, need, <laughs> I need less geckos. Yep, no, that is fair. Um, maybe some great deals there. So I – speaking of, like, deals, we were talking about trades, right? I feel like right now most of the people I talk to are, you know, trying either to sell something, to buy something. I'm in that boat. Right. Uh, but a lot of people don't have liquid cash. So I almost feel like, do you ever notice that like trades are, are really a, a big thing in this? I love trades. Don't talk about whenever I was yeah. first starting out, I had an incident where I made a bad trade and, uh, and not, it was not in favor of the other person. Um, one, I didn't have a lot of experience yet. Um, 
and two, I, I don't want to call it greed, but um, I got overexcited about a potential deal and we did a trade, but in the end, everything worked out, but um, yeah, just keep calm, <laughs> I would say, yes. and uh, do the right thing for people. And uh, I think trades are, trades are great. The IRS doesn't, uh, can't take anything from you. <laughs> and and trade, the only so. downside to trades that I have is then I have to, it, it's shipping, right? So if I'm trading with someone in person, easy peasy, right. not, not a big deal, right? But most of the people that like I'm trying to trade with, I then have to go, okay, how much is shipping going to be? And it's, right. it's cheaper than buying the gecko outright. But still, it's like, well, you know, I got to justify to the wife. Why are you About spending $88 yeah. randomly? <laughs> you know? right. so. That's why you sell babies at a, like, okay. Like, so whenever I got Cheeto, I, um, mm -hmm. there's a guy, sometimes I sell wholesale too. So I just grab 10 babies and I'm like, hey, uh, I'll sell them to an X amount. Uh, they're decent looking. You want to do it? And yeah. sometimes you will and sometimes you won't, but. I got lucky and I was this able to afford a Cheeto. So that's awesome. If I need to like ship, you know, ship a gecko, a lot of the time, um, it'll, or if I do, if I'm doing a trade, um, I'll have just done a trade or something, so I just can keep recycling out boxes or something. But a lot of the cool stuff that yep. I have, I've done through trades. Um, I don't do it as often anymore because of the number of geckos I have. I I can like right. wholesale or something if I'm not super motivated to sell some of my nice my nicer stuff to make it happen i can wholesale so do you mind if i ask what, what you're able to wholesale your geckos for? um the, what i'm comfortable with i usually can do like mm -hmm. 50 to 75 dollars on some of my crested geckos that aren't probably in like the 150 to 200 dollar range and then sure. i won't i won't do anything less than like 90 dollars for gargoyles just because i don't yeah. really produce anything that I can't sell for like two seventy five or more. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, yeah, and, and I find it interesting too. I've had a lot of people reach out, and there's nothing wrong with this, but right. I've had a lot of people reach out for gargoyles, and they're like, "My price range is one hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars," and I'm like, I, "I wish I could help you, you yeah. know, but I just I, I value I, I put in too much time and money right. to look at a creature that it'll like, take me a little bit longer because, to sell them at the higher price point, but at the same time, if you're not willing to invest in your critter then i don't want to sell to right. you either Not and i remember the mindset are... that i had right you know i i mean i thought 150 bucks was a lot for you know a reptile you know um when, when you can pick up a bearded dragon for 50 bucks right right but i agree with you you know it's a different ball game right um like you said the time and money that i've invested in it now um I'm okay with holding on to it a little bit longer and if it gets bigger and you know, more colorful then yay me. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, and that's the thing. It does happen. I mean, they, they do, I've never had a gecko get uglier. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, <laughs> they only either get better or they, they sort of, you know, plateau, but um, you know, I don't give people deals because people gave me oh, deals. For sure. Right. Um, and I think that's just part of the fun of it is, you know, but there's a difference between, me offering a deal and trying to be nice versus someone like demanding a deal. I've had right. a lot of that recently where, um, unfortunately, you know, and, and not to, to rag on people, but I, a lot of entitlement of, you know, they know what, what geckos are worth. And I'm like, how okay. many geckos do you own? Go and buy cool. it. Awesome. Go buy them. You can go, I mean, go to go somewhere else. I'm totally cool with that. Right. Or people, I, especially with some of the higher end stuff where we're offering me trades and I love offering trades to people. I, I put in a, an offer to someone for a trade today. And if they say no, I'm like, at least cool I asked. no big deal. Yeah. No, yeah. At least I tried where the, I had a person just two days ago, reach out to me and goes, you know, I want to trade you this lychee. And it was a nice lychee, but I don't need the lychees. Right. Right. I, that's not my jam. And all of a sudden they just started cursing me out and like, Oh, you're going to regret it. You know, I'm like, dude, just cause I said, no, like, it, let's it, see who loses worse than that. I'm going to screenshot our conversation and I'm going to post it <laughs> on my social media. Let's see who wins. Right. <laughs> yeah. And who's got a bigger platform. I mean, I, and I'm not big on, you know, I'm not in the cancel culture kind of thing yeah. either, but you know, it is one of those things where I'm like, you know, that's okay. No, no offense. You know, just, I just don't Block. want it. 
And they're like, yeah. They're like, don't ever talk to me again. Dude, your wish is my command. Right. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, just don't be rude to people, guys. Yeah. You know, we all, you know, these are these are animals that we value. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing this. And uh, if you don't like our deals, go somewhere else. Yeah. No problem. There's plenty of other people out there breeding them. Exactly. You know, you, you can find a $150 gecko, dollar gecko. You know, they're right. out there. But there's a but, reason that uh, you want mine. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> I... I know what it's going to turn into. Right. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. So, but, but most of the time, have you had, I think, okay. you know, most of the time my prices are flexible unless someone comes right out of the gate and they're just like, they, they ask one, 50% to go, yeah, <laughs> like an insanely uh, different price than what's posted. Yep. And then on top of that, they want free shipping or they're like, yes, I'm like, no, <laughs> But if someone comes in, talks to me a long time about a gecko, and I'm not, this is not a formula for anyone to try to get me to go down on price. But if someone yeah. messages me and I can uh, sincerely sense that um, they have an interest in getting a gecko, but they don't have the money up front, but you know they can afford the upkeep, I'll I'll work with people. Um, that's probably yeah, how most of my sales and shows pretty... have gone. Um, they'll they'll see my price tags and. Again, if I can sell one gecko at a higher price and pay for my booth and pay for my hotel, I'm I'm perfectly okay with spending the whole weekend shitting or shooting the shit with people and you know looking at yeah. cool critters. Um, so if I see someone that comes up and's like, oh, I really like that one, but it's just out of my price range, and I say, okay, what's in your price range? I'll look at mm-hmm. all the geckos that are similar and I'll be like, okay, do you like this one? Do you like this one? Um, or you know, if it's not that far off from the one they want, I, you know, I'll make that happen but um yeah to see the joy of people like i can remember what that feels like when someone gives you a good deal um because people can sense that you really like these critters absolutely you know and if it's my choice it, it makes me feel good it makes them feel good it, it's a win-win and uh, i mean and, and guys use this as a formula for me if you see something on my page you like i'm totally fine with it I always, you know, sometimes I I do a big markup from what I'll take. Sometimes I'll do a little markup, right? Um, And I always put a little bit of a buffer in there because I know people want to get a deal, right? Right. And so sometimes that whether that's free shipping or not, I I got a bunch of animals with free shipping when I started buying. I actually thought it was kind of normal. And all of a sudden, you know, the market started to go down and they're like, nope, no, we're not doing that. Now shipping is as pricey as the actual animal itself. Oh, it's astronaut. (laughs) Right. Well, that's the thing is when, when you ask for free shipping, basically subtract 80 to to $100, you know, for, for most people. Um, it used to be just California I'd have to worry about right. shipping where it's like 80 bucks, But, you know, most of the time it's 60 70 80 bucks for shipping. Right. And that's, that's straight and out of the, the tip of the Texas cost of the or the bottom of Texas. So yeah. everywhere is far for me. Yeah. Usually yeah. it's probably it, around like 40 to $60 to ship within Texas and then – Seventy five dollars to one hundred and fifty um, elsewhere. Yeah, I just ran into the my first time this ever happened. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but there was someone who's only three three and a half hours away from me, right? Who was inquiring about a gecko, and I'm like, you know, I know that's a long drive. You know, it's it's right. not just a, a hour jaunt. Um, I can offer you shipping, you know, right. and they're like, sure, just give me a quote. So I went to go put it in. I went to, to two different websites that, that, you know, do the shipping and both of them came back with error. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait am I too close to ship? <laughs> like, is that a thing? <laughs> like, okay. I mean, put it in the truck for me. I, right. I, I, <laughs> if, if they want that convenience, I was surprised that I couldn't do that. One most of the time I offer, if it's within like four hours, most of the time mm-hmm. I'll say, let's meet halfway. Or if I yeah. can find an opportunity, um, to either make a trade with someone or something like that, or make another sale. I usually like, if I'm going to like, since I'm going to Dallas, I'll scroll mm-hmm. through all of the, um, like classified groups on Facebook or whatever, and see if there's anything else I want out there to like, if I can justify it through a trade or another sale just or something. Yeah, yeah. I'll just make it up that way. No, that, that's fair. Yeah. And I don't mind doing it as long as it's paid in full ahead of time. Uh, one thing I, I will never do again is just meet somebody and, and expect cash. Yeah. Um, because I've been stood up so many times just in my reptile career. Right. Of let's meet here at this time, and I'm sitting there in my car. 
Oh. I'm waiting, and I'm waiting. I've got lucky. Texting. I never had to deal with that. Oh, it's the worst. The absolute worst. And then, you know, sorry, bro, man. <laughs> I overslept. No. Right. <laughs> Wasting, you know, hours. Um, plus, as, as I get older with kids, it's, it's hard for me to justify driving two and a half, three hours somewhere. Yeah. Um, wasting half the day. So, right. but you know, if, if it's worth it, it's worth it. And I'll, I'll definitely go. Right. Um, but yeah, very cool, dude. I had a great time chatting with you. I, uh, and I really appreciate you coming on. I, uh, where can people find you? Obviously you're going to be at the Dallas show, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm on the wait list for like Conroe and a couple of other shows through Herps, um, shows, but I'll be at NARBC awesome. Dallas. Um, it's actually in Dallas this year. It's normally in Arlington, but I think they um, moved venues this year. Um, so I'll be there. Um, yeah. You can find me at most social media outlets uh, at Nasty Racks on Morph Market. That's awesome. I definitely took everything down off my Morph Market just because those ads were so outdated that it was just easier to <laughs> delete them all and to update them. So. <laughs> <laughs> and with so many babies, yeah, just just hit you up uh, in your DMs, right? I, uh, but yeah, you know, I might even uh, if you got some real stunners, let me know if you're you're interested in trade. I always I always like that too. Cool. Um, so, but I, when those babies hatch with Cheeto, you know who to contact first if they come out <laughs> glowing. I know you're gonna keep the best one for yourself, but I, uh, but just for remember sure. me. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Well, thank you again so much for coming on. I, you know, I, I'm trying to get something together and this is the first time I'm announcing it, but I would love to do like a panel of, you know, people that have been on the podcast to come in and do a live where we go and, you know, just take live questions uh, on YouTube. Cool. And just throw it to the panel. Whoever's the best expert can talk about it. Um, I'd love to have you on one of those panels. And do me a favor. If you're watching this, uh, go let me know in the comments if you guys would like to see it and who from my, my previous guest list that you would like to see on one of those panels. Um, and please do all that Facebook Momo Jumbo. Like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment. Let us know which uh, project you're the most excited about. the notification about. bell. There you go. <laughs> yeah. L let us bother you all the time. <laughs> so, but yeah, awesome. Well, thanks, Nate. I really appreciate it again. And uh, we'll see you soon. All right. Have a good one. Bye. Hey, if you've enjoyed this video and want to encourage me to make more Gargoyle Gecko content, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button, share this with a friend, and maybe uh, check out one of the videos right over there. I'll see you next time on Gecko Cove.